I'm Leo Walter for Kit Guru, and this epic glass case here is the Corsair Crystal 570X. Corsair tells us it's their most stunning and beautiful case they've ever designed, and I'm not going to disagree. It looks absolutely fantastic. It has also given me whole new ways of showing off unwanted reflections on camera. It has been fun and games getting to this stage. So, 578 is expensive in the UK, and yes, our currency is giving us problems in terms of exchange rate, um, so the pound and the dollar are pretty much at parity, but £175 including VAT, uh, which is expensive, no two ways about it. There are more expensive cases on the market, this is quite expensive. However, it includes uh, the Corsair SP120 RGB fan lighting kit, which are these three fans here, which you can see are glowing away doing their thing. Uh, that kit sells for £53. It's a controller and the three fans, and each of the fans has two connectors, one lighting controller and one regular three-pin fan connector. Uh, so that is a, a separate set of hardware in its own right. If you take the £53 off that uh, £175, you're down to £122, which is not cheap for a case, but we've seen plenty of cases for that sort of price. And when you consider it has glass on this side, this side, the top, and that side, i.e. all the major panels apart from the bottom and the back, then uh, it certainly makes it actually sound very reasonable. Now, I'm going to dive in in a moment and tell you what's what in terms of the uh, uh, the innards of the system, as it were, because it's very much a case chassis that then has that lighting kit added to it, and then they hang the glass on it, along with some clever sort of filters and such like, uh, because glass very often is unfiltered, so within the, uh, within the frame of the system, they've got filters. They've done it very neatly. Uh, as ever, photos on KitGuru to show you the ins and the outs, uh, but let's get on with this. So we've got some buttons on the I.O., which is here. And if I just cycle through this, we should go through one two, three, and four, and we should be back to static red. I'm sticking with the red partly because I've gone for red illumination within the thing, and I don't want to go through the lights, uh, the, the different color modes, there are seven, I believe, uh, one of which is green because that'll monkey with the camera, and we don't need that. Uh, but again, photos on KitGuru to show you what's what. Uh, so, the lighting is obviously a significant part of it. If you're not interested in that lighting kit, if you're not interested in having the three 120s at the front with all the LEDs, walk away. Not for you. Um, if you take those out of this case, it kind of makes very little sense. Uh, the glass, similarly. Now, when you look at the back panel, uh, you can say, well, hang on, if you have a back panel, all you're seeing inside is all the cabling and the licorice. That's, that's not very good. Uh, depends how you build your system, obviously. I ran to a few snags of this, as I will detail in a moment. Uh, the top, similarly, is obviously entirely cosmetic, so the front and the main panel, you either want it or you don't. Uh, that's fair. And then you have the main chassis. The chassis, it's, it's not a massive case. Uh, it's an ATX, and it... Uh, accommodates the usual hobby you'd expect in a system like that. It has not got epic amounts of space inside because, as I say, it's the chassis and you kind of got extra little bits to hang the glass off. So that adds a centimetre all around to the overall uh, size of the thing. And yet, despite that, it is relatively bloody heavy, but relatively compact. So the hardware inside that you can see here and in the photos, we've got an Azus Rampage uh, 5 Edition 10 motherboard, which is E-ATX. I put that in purely just to see if it would go, although uh, Corsair says it's uh, ATX only. It went just, so fair enough, and you can still get the cable management holes. Uh, I've put a quad-core Xeon E5 Broadwell E on it, which is the equivalent, therefore, of a Core i7. Uh, we've got some Vengeance DDR4 LED memory from Corsair, with the LEDs flashing away, and then the liquid cooling, all sorts. Uh, I've got a pair of EVGA GTX 980s with EK blocks and backplates, Alpha Cool uh, XPX CPU block, which is glowing away, that's the new illuminated one, actually the light in this one happens to be blue, so that's a bit out of step. Uh, uh, an Alpha Cool 360 radiator. Now the idea is that you can put a 360 in the front or up to, or a 280. You can put a 240 in the roof. You can put two 140 fans, but a 280 radiator is most unlikely to go because of the space above the motherboard. You could, if you wish, probably put a 120 at the rear, but uh, 
Um, so really it's, but you're going to be using the stock fans, that's the thing. Um, so I've hung the radiator on those fans. And then I've got an EK D5 pump, uh, EK uh, reservoir, cylindric reservoir, some uh, Alpha Call Aurora LED rings around the reservoir, the LED sticks I've put at the top and the uh, back, I think it is. There's two sticks anyway, um, are dark side LEDs from uh, Mayhem's and the uh, coolant is Mayhem's pastel red. Uh, gone for red theme just because why not? There's a lot of black going on otherwise. Now the power supply is a Corsair AX1500i, partly because it's Corsair and partly because I've got it. Um, it's a big power supply and it actually really brought home that this PC is uh, the chassis rather. When, when you strip away all the finery, the chassis actually is uh, tight for space. Let me just start pulling off some panels. So we've got Thumb screws on the rear glass. Which is then being pushed off by the cables at the rear. And away it comes. Solid piece of glass, nicely done. On the top, this is slightly a uh, Interesting because the fasteners for the top are again thumb screws, but they're very long, like so. Because then you take the glass away, and beneath you have uh, this magnetically retained uh, I think it's magnetically retained, it sort of clips in place anyway, certainly it says magnets, uh, dust filter, all quite exotically shaped. So beneath that glass, fully filtered, and then the top, as you'll see in our photos, is open. Uh, now, Corsair makes a feature about the fact that you've got uh, a rack for the top and a rack for the front so you can mount the fans easily, which goes from the inside of the chassis, two thumb screws to hold it up. So it's not like the Fantex thing where it slides out like a filing cabinet drawer. It latches in place and then you do it up. It works well enough. It does obviously mean you need access to the inside to pull it out, which is not necessarily as straightforward as it might be. Uh, also, it's curious, the top is entirely open, I mean, under that filter. So what it means is you don't have the option of mounting other hardware in that place. You haven't got a whole bunch of perforations. You might get, it flows air obviously like a champ because it's just a great big open cavity, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unusual thing to do. And then the front comes off like so. Again, four thumb screws, nice piece of glass. Put that there, out of sight. And then we pull off the huge dust filter, uh, which covers that uh, LED there with the Corsair logo. And that's all lovely as well. So gaining access to the filter is quite straightforward. And we've got a filter underneath somewhere. We'll come to that. And then you can see the fans in all their glory. That little piece there is um, sort of like the curved bezel at the front uh, held on with a couple of screws. But once you take this away, you can see you're actually left with a very conventional case. I'm just gonna rudely pull off the power. And then let's take out this uh, main glass panel. And I should have possibly mentioned the fact that the uh, Corsair logo on the power supply cover is also LED illuminated, but you saw that. So, in the main chamber, it's all very conventional. The um, bottom here is slotted to allow you to mount a pump or reservoir quite easily, but the fact that it's then kind of stepping in with this power supply cover here and the pack cable sticking out uh, means that it's not for me the obvious position to use. So I've gone for putting, I've put the pump up on a fan bracket up there as you can see in the res on the back using that perforated mesh which worked perfectly okay. It meant in turn that the uh, hosing was a little bit tight um, because I'm, you know, I haven't got a lot of space to work with. Uh, I couldn't really see how that location was going to be ideal for a pump reservoir. It was doable, it just, it, it just didn't really look good to me. Which left me with a curious feeling that this case, which looks superb, it gave me the feeling that Corsair would actually far prefer you use one of their all-in-ones, which I can see. They, uh, they design and sell the things after one. They make some very good all-in-ones. Uh, so were you to do that, great. Uh, of course, it means that then adding um, liquid cooling to your GPU could be tricky, although they, they sell an adapter. But this case 
it looks so bling. The idea you find it difficult putting a custom loop in was really peculiar to me. But nonetheless, I persevered and it, I think it looks absolutely superb. Uh, it looks even better with the glass in place, mind you, and the lighting on. But there we go. Now, if I turn the case around, And this for me is the moment when it's a little like asking a butcher what he puts in his pies, which is you sometimes don't really want to know the answer uh, because it's as messy as messy can be. Now, there is a cable management plate that fits in place with two screws that could cover most of this cabling, but there's just too much cabling for it to cover in this instance. And the irony is that that's because of the Corsair power supply. That uh, AX1500, which is a brilliant power supply, has some really meaty cables and managing them was just an absolute nightmare. I have various other power supplies I could have happily used that would have actually done a better job, but it's a Corsair case, it only seemed right to use a Corsair power supply. So that's what you see. Uh, this board here is part and parcel of the um, Asus motherboard, the Rampage 5. It's sort of an additional fan controller. Um, so that's there, so I could power the lighting off it. Um, other than that, the uh, Corsair SSD there is in its bay and it's happy and you can see the other drive base um, which is similar to the uh, Carbide 270R we're also reviewing um, in, in this new launch. So stealth drive bay is absolutely fine, fixed power supply cover, power supply goes away but the thing is that uh, 1500 is a long power supply. I've got this much space here for the cabling. As I say it's unwieldy cabling. Putting the power supply with the cable is actually surprisingly difficult. Uh, and I just didn't expect that with what looks like such a large case. The fact is, it is not a large case. It's a really conventional ATX mid-tower chassis under an awful lot of really nice cladding. So you've basically got a conventional case that does a perfectly reasonable job with some really nice illuminated fans uh, and some stunning glass. And my takeaway from this is, although I've gone to town and custom looped the thing and I think come up with a decent, let's turn around so you can see the good side. That's better. Uh, so my takeaway is, although I think you can build a really nice PC into this case, although it takes a certain amount of work and it cools like a champ and it does a really fine job and it's nice and quiet and despite the fact it's all glass, it's fully filtered, all those potential problems of how do you show off our shiny new Corsair fans with a load of uh, LED fans with a load of glass. They've covered that no problem at all. How do you keep the cabling out of sight? Well, frankly, the answer is you probably don't want to use the Corsair 1500 uh, power supply. You want to use something else that's got some slightly more amenable cabling or perhaps some um, aftermarket cables to plug into the power supply. I think that would work very nicely. I'm still unconvinced about the idea of glass uh, back panels because that's where you're trying to hide your stuff away and if it's glass then you have to make it look pretty otherwise it's just a nightmare. As I say I couldn't get that cable management plate in, it, just, it wasn't possible. Overall uh, it's a fascinating case, it looks superb, there's certainly a few quirks, uh, mainly cable management uh, and it's not cheap, no two ways about it, but it looks absolutely blinding. When the lights are turned up it's just to die for. Uh, if you like this video thumbs up, if you don't thumbs down, if you want more videos from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Neil Water for Kit Guru, this is the Corsair Crystal 570X.